All right, welcome to uh, LTHS Physics. Uh, got an example with simple harmonic motion. Uh, this is uh, a fairly short example, and it also involves a little bit of, uh, of Newton's second law and friction. So let's say uh, you're walking along, and alas, there's a spring attached to the wall, spring constant K. And uh, you've got a cart attached to the spring. We'll assume that cart, the wheels are frictionless, so we're not going to worry about that. And on top of that big cart, you have a block, mass little m, resting on top of it. And the coefficient of static friction between those two is mu sub s. And uh, my question is really simple. Uh, using the, the variables, okay, um, in terms of these givens, what is the maximum distance that I can pull the cart and let it go such that the two, the cart and the block, will not slip relative to each other? So what's the max value of that displacement? What's the max amplitude this motion can have? If, if the motion is um, relatively slow and not very big amplitude, there won't be any slippage. But if the amplitude's bigger, okay, the objects will slip and uh, they'll fall off. So the question is, what's that max amplitude? So um, since we got two objects moving, I'm going to have to draw two FBDs. I'll start with the little dude. Okay, so here's the little dude. Um, what force moves him left and right? Well, it's friction. And I don't really care which way he's moving at any given time. So let's say he's accelerating to the right. That will be the force of friction. We've got little mg acting on him and F normal acting on him. Um, the, the force of friction is equal to or less than mu sub s fn. This is the max value for the force of static friction. Remember, static friction can range from 0 to a max value. Well, we want the max value, so I'm going to use the equal part of this. And basically, I'm going to use Newton's second law, and that force equals ma. Okay. Well, the only force that accelerates him is the force of friction, which is mu sub s times fn. And in this problem, fn is going to equal little mg. And that equals little ma. And the m's drop out, and you just found your max acceleration. Our max acceleration is mu sub s times g. Okay? Now, we didn't ask you for that, um, but you need that to do the problem. Okay? So that's, uh, that's the maximum acceleration this dude can have and not let this dude slip. Okay? Now, to find um, the, the biggest amplitude this motion can have, um, I am going to now look at the two block system together. I'm going to draw that as one FBD. So in that case, we have little m plus big M. The only force acting on these guys is the spring force. Okay? You've got uh, big M plus little m g acting down. You have a normal force acting up. I'll call that Fn2. That's the table holding the, the cart up. Um, but really, the only force that we're interested in is this force. If I look at the two block system, that's the only horizontal force external to it. So um, I'm going to write net force equals ma for this system. Uh, the only force is uh, kx. And that equals m. Now, in this case, we got big M plus little m, and then times a. Now. Uh, I want the max acceleration. So I'll put a max there, and that will give me my max value of x, which is the amplitude of the motion, which is a. So basically, I'm just solving for a. Um, I'm going to sub in for a max. I'm going to sub in this. And you've pretty much got your answer. It's uh, big M plus little m times this, which is mu sub s g over k. So that is the biggest amplitude that the motion can have and not let the little guy slip on top of the big guy. Okay? Now there's a second method to doing this. Um, it's just going to take me a minute. Um, this is like the Newton second law way of doing it. Okay? Well, what about the simple harmonic motion way of doing it? Okay? Well, when you do simple harmonic motion, we want to get acceleration in terms of x. Whatever is in front of that x, well, first of all, it should be negative. Whatever is in front of that x 
is omega squared. Okay? And then um, to find the amplitude, we know that A max equals omega squared times the amplitude. Okay? So the amplitude simply equals A max over omega squared. Okay? Well, um, we already found A max. Okay? A max, you still got to do this to find A max. That's our value for A max. Well, what is omega squared? Okay? Well, basically, you got Newton's second law for this guy. We're going to rewrite this. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite it. So it's kx equals big M plus little m a. Now, I will make one slight modification. Okay? In this problem here, I, was only care, I only cared about the magnitude. I have to now kind of worry about the direction. I need that negative sign in there. So here's the deal. If I pull this thing to the right, the spring is going to accelerate left. So whatever x is, a is the opposite sign. So I will, I will conveniently add a negative here. Boom. All right. But then we've got our equation. If I solve for a, a equals negative x or negative k over big M plus little m x. Okay. Whatever's in front of the x, if I got a in terms of x, whatever's in front of the x is omega squared. Okay? So I'll write omega squared equals k over big M plus little m. Okay? If you then take this and plug it in there, and we know a max is mu sub s times g, and you solve for amplitude, you're going to get exactly the same answer we got before. Okay, so basically we found amplitude to, to, doing two different things. Here we just used straight up Newton's second law um, a couple times, one for the little block, one for both. In this example, in this part of the example, we still have to find A max by using Newton's second law, but then we use simple harmonic motion to figure out what the amplitude of our motion was. So you can do either one, they're both about the same amount of effort, I'd say. Um, so there you go. Um, oftentimes, as you, as you are well aware in this class, um, there's multiple ways often to solve a single problem. So I hope that was helpful, and uh, adios.